My name is Vanessa Briscoe Hay. Um, I came to Athens in 1973 to attend the University of Georgia uh, Art School. And uh, while in art school, I made some great friends, including um, some that I joined a band with right after college, which was meant to be at the time just a one-off deal. Um, Randy Bewley had the idea in the fall of 1978 um, to start a band, basically, the B-52s had left town and left a vacuum in our town. And uh, he looked at this like an art project. Um, really, he just had one goal. The goal was to go to New York, um, play a club, and get written up a New York rocker. And uh, he convinced Michael LaHusky, his roommate, <clears throat> to do this. They uh, got together, they started playing at first. It was Randy on drums and Michael um, played bass because it only had four strings. And he thought that um, that would be easier somehow. And so they were jamming and jamming and jamming and then you know they really weren't getting anywhere. So Randy switched to guitar and uh, they were in the Myers building downtown. Um, up on the second floor, well, the third floor, their landlord, Curtis Crow, had, um, that was renting the studios out below, had a loft. And uh, he was hanging out with his friend, Bill Taper, and he heard him going through these riffs over and over. And um, he thought to himself, they need a drummer. Um, hey, I'm a drummer. I'm just going to go down there and um, ask them if I could be their drummer um, to help them get through this. So he went downstairs and was like, hey, do you need a drummer? Can I dr drag my uh, drums in here? And um, they started jamming together. And after a while, um, they had some uh, songs written and they invited some friends to audition. And the others didn't work out for whatever reason. But... Uh, uh, they, Randy thought of me, and he said, hey, Vanessa's a friend of ours. We really like her. Let's invite her to audition. Well, I hadn't really sung, you know, solo ever. I um, was in the high school choir. I was in the high school marching band, and I'd taken piano lessons as a child. Um, but my music wasn't my focus at that point, and I certainly never dreamed I would ever be a singer. So uh, <clears throat> I, I went and auditioned, and uh, the next day they said, you're in. So um, we played. We played a couple of shows. Our first show was just like two or three weeks later um, in March 9th of 1979, we played upstairs above Chapter 3 Records, which was a record store uh, that was located right across from the Arches, kind of next to where Starbucks is now, to give you an idea of where it was. And uh, they let us have a party upstairs, and it was us and another band called the Tone Tones, uh, which had some musicians that spun off into other groups later, like Method Actors and Go Van Go. So... Uh, we played, and um, they had rigged up some neon and some lights and some projections and things. Uh, um, it was really interesting, uh, but people just stood there and stared at us. It was like, what the heck is this? And um, the second time we played, it was pretty much the same thing. Uh, so uh, about the third or fourth time we played, we played at a place called the Brick House out in the country, um, just over the Oglethorpe County line, and B-52s had come back to town, and uh, they came to this party that we played, and they heard us, and they immediately just went bananas. They were like catalysts. They just started dancing like crazy, and everybody else was like, hey, we can dance to this too, <laughs> and they all started dancing. It was just like crazy. So after we played, the B-52 said, let us help you get to New York. You really should go to New York. And we were like, wow. So they helped us get booked up 
there uh, through a friend of theirs named Robert Molnar. He worked the door at the Mud Club at the time. And we did play there just a few months later in August at a club called Hurrah, opening for the Gang of Four. And a few nights before that, we'd open for the Gang of Four in Philadelphia. And then we played in Boston. And so what ended up happening is we didn't get booked, uh, excuse me, we didn't end up getting written up in um, um, the New York Rocker until the next year, but our very first show was reviewed uh, by Glenn O'Brien in a magazine called Interview Magazine. And uh, we started getting offers uh, to perform, and we uh, said, well, this is fun. Let's just do it as long as it's fun. And uh, so we did. And we continued on uh, for several years there. We toured the country. Uh, we opened for bands like PIL, Talking Heads, B-52s, Gang of Four, Lana Lovich, uh, and played alongside a lot of other cool bands like Mission of Burma from Boston, Insect Surfers from Northampton, Massachusetts, you know, and uh, uh, Romeo Void from San Francisco. <clears throat> A lot of really cool acts. Got to go to England, played in Canada, um, put out two records, but then um, in December 1983 we disbanded. And so, uh, you know, I just went to work for a while and, you know, had my first child, uh, Hannah, and then um, we. Uh, we got back together a second time, basically because Oriam had come to Michael and said, we think the world might get you now. And we'd also uh, been, we'd been um, in this, you know, they'd put us in this movie, Athens, Georgia, Inside Out. And we continued to get fan mail. So it was like, well, hey, let's try this for a while. Let's approach it like a business. Um, Recorded another record, uh, then we disbanded again, and then you know uh, we all went about our lives. Randy was um, became an art teacher. Michael was doing graphics. Um, had a um, business called Candy downtown uh, that supplied DJs. Curtis started working in the uh, movie TV business on movie movies like Blue Crush and um, Cool Runnings and the TV series Lost, you know, as an example. Well, about 2004, Randy came to all of us individually and he said, I'd like to get together to play again just for fun. I really miss you guys. And so it, it was kind of a good point in our lives because, um, you know, as an example, my kids were a little older and so we did. We got together and we played uh, until uh, Randy passed away in um, um, February of 2009. Um, I'd also had another project with him called uh, Super Cluster. Now, how Nietzsche's ends, you know, enters this uh, story for me is the third time Pylon got together. We didn't really have a practice space, and it got more difficult to you know, say, um, find a really inexpensive place to practice or practice in your house, you know, that type of thing. Uh, so we started coming here to Nucci Space to practice, and uh, we really enjoyed it. We usually got the same room. It was a corner room that was a little larger. I think it's got a piano in there, although we never played the piano. And uh, um, that was that was great. And... Uh, you know, uh, what's, what's happened as time has gone on, um, Nietzsche's is like become more and more important in the community. Uh, I'm a retired nurse, but I've seen where they've had clinics uh, for people who don't have health care, um, which is important. I mean, that's like a national problem uh, where people who have a marginal income as many artists do, um, musicians and otherwise, uh, they just don't have health insurance. And so providing that access is extremely important. 
uh, providing uh, the suicide prevention um, and counseling that they do here for families, also families that are going through the grief process of having lost someone is extremely important. Um, I don't think there's anywhere else in the country like this place, and I totally support it. They've supported me, supported my family and my friends, and uh, uh, just God bless Nietzsche Space. The biggest piece of advice I'd have to anyone um, who's starting a band or uh, wants to con consider um, making music now is um, have fun. Have a really good time. But if it looks like you're going to catch on and it's going to do something, um, get some professionals involved so that you're not taken advantage of. Um, there are free legal clinics, I believe. Sometimes Nietzsche's is offered these. Uh, get an accountant, you know, um, do, do, do some of that business stuff because you don't want to have to revisit all of those things in the future because you didn't nail them down in the beginning. Don't sign your publishing away, as an example. Uh, so, have fun, and if you're gonna, if you feel like you're gonna make it big, start getting some uh, business uh, uh, professionals involved to help you out that are trustworthy. I think the Athens music scene is special. Um, it's not really like anywhere else I've ever been. Now, there are other music scenes around the country that are vibrant and important, and uh, I'm not dissing them at all. Uh, but one thing that I've noticed here about the uh, Athens music scene is it is all-inclusive. Um, we have people from many different backgrounds. We have all ages. And um, another thing that I see is that Bands really do support each other. Uh, they help each other um, get shows, uh, uh, share addresses, phone numbers, um, open for each other, share members in some cases. At one point before the pandemic, um, I believe Athens had over 350 bands listed, and they were calling us the uh, San Francisco of the South. Um, that's mind-boggling for a town this size to have that many bands. And so many of them were are different from each other. Uh, they pride themselves on their difference and their uh, sound. They, tried, they make an effort not to sound like each other. Now, they might be, in some cases, geared toward a specific genre, like uh, the hip-hop artist or... Uh, you know, Americana or, uh, you know, indie music or whatever, but I think they make a real effort um, to be original and to have this much original music in a college town, is, it just blows my mind.